Hi guys, it's ASPOT and this is the Realme GT. It's Realme's answer to the age-old question, can you create a truly great smartphone, one that ticks all of the major boxes and doesn't, importantly, compromise on many major areas and do all of that for a reasonable price. The perfect flagship killer, if you will. Many have tried, but only a very small few have actually succeeded. So the question is, have Realme actually hit the... <laughs> hit the nail on the head, <laughs> was what I was trying to say. <laughs> Let's find out. Realme did reach out to sponsor this first look at their brand new offering, but all views are my own and they are watching this at the same time that you are. And as always with these, I will showcase what I like and things that I think could potentially be improved. First impressions. Let's do this. Bam. Now, Realme also sent over this huge box containing three other new items, including this tiny but powerful 50 watt Type-C charger, second gen Buds Air wireless earbuds, and second gen watch as well. I will test these over the next week or so, and we'll update you on Twitter and Instagram regarding their performance for sure. But let me know in the comments if you would like to see any additional dedicated content on these. So now we move on to the Realme GT, Banana Man. So firstly, what are the main areas that I think a perfect flagship killer needs to nail? Personally, performance, display, camera, battery, and price. Obviously hugely important, otherwise it's not really a flagship killer. It's just a flagship. So let's start with performance and internal hardware. The Realme GT is the first Realme smartphone to use the Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 chip, which is widely regarded as the benchmark of quality on the Android side, and is of course 5G capable. This is probably why Realme chose the GT tag, which generally stands for high speed performance in cars, something that is compounded by this go faster stripe on the rear, running down through this yellow vegan leather finish from the camera module. More on cameras later. Combined with a huge 12 gigabytes of RAM, this phone absolutely crushes pretty much anything that's needed of it without a quiver, from simple things like social media to heavy multitasking and gaming. If you are gonna be gaming for long periods, there is a new stainless steel cooling system, which apparently has a 50% increase in cooling power. So the first category for me, performance is a tick. Next up, display. Now it's not quite symmetrical. You do have a slightly bigger chin than the rest, but apart from that, it's very solid indeed. 6.43 inches, Full HD+, AMOLED, 120Hz refresh rate with a 360Hz touch sampling rate. Nice and smooth and responsive, and it's pretty bright too at 1000 nits. And punch hole camera cut out the top left hand side, housing a 16 megapixel selfie camera. Yes, it's not Quad HD or 4K, it's not the absolute top tier when it comes to displays in the smartphone market, but I think the word I used earlier pretty much represents this area very solid. And this word runs through to the camera as well. Let me explain. So on the surface, we have a triple camera setup consisting of a 64 megapixel primary sensor, an eight megapixel ultra wide angle, and a two megapixel macro lens. Now I make no secret about the fact that I think macro lenses and filter lenses on smartphones are, for me, a little bit of a waste of time. I think manufacturers do tend to put them in, include them, because it, it beefs up the system a little bit, it gives you more options, and they are cheap to actually install. On the positive side, some of you absolutely love using macro lenses and it's another option, like I said, to play around with. And the other two lenses do a pretty decent job. You can use the 64 megapixel mode if you want that added detail for cropping, etc. And the upgraded multi-frame algorithm can shoot several pictures at the same time and combine them to reduce noise and improve clarity. I do sometimes think that pictures sometimes look a little bit artificial, a little bit maybe over sharpened at times, but on the whole, you can get some really great shots. And as always with Realme phones, the customization options and different modes are absolutely great. From pro mode to cinema style and dual view video, portrait and night modes, it should be enough to get your creative juices flowing. If you do need to add some juice to your Realme GT, the retail box comes with a 65 watt super dark charger, which will charge your 4,500 mAh battery from naught to 100% in just over half an hour, which is very practical if you are someone who is always on the go. Yeah, sure, it's not the largest battery on the smartphone market right now, but to fit a 4,500 in this sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Chassis? <laughs> Pretty good. Chassis. There are of course other possibly more subjective factors when you're looking at a phone uh, that don't come inside those top five points. 
uh, like software for example, which in this case is Realme UI 2.0 over Android 11, which focuses on being fairly close to stock, but with a fair bit of customization from different dark and one-handed modes, floating windows, changeable icon designs and placements, system cloner where you can give yourself the feeling of having two phones in one, and sleep capsule to name a handful. If you are listening to music or watching a movie or gaming, you do have stereo speakers, so I'm sure you'll agree, so far a pretty great package overall. But again, for it to be a flagship killer, it needs to be of a reduced price. What is that? And what emissions have they gone to in order to find that price bracket? Starting with price, the Realme GT will retail from €369. Euros. Very, very respectable, compelling price, considering what we know so far. So. How have they got there? Well, there's no IP rating. That may or may not affect you. There's no wireless charging. That may or may not affect you. But we do get a headphone jack. Hey! Which on flagship killers and flagships, you tend not to find these days. Again, that is something that may actually make you go, yes, I want to go and buy it for that Jackery Jujar. Jackery Jujar, that's definitely not a thing. We're going to move on. Top phone for the price, another great option if you are looking for a flagship killer in 2021. Let me know whether it's your flagship killer of 2021 or whether another brand, another manufacturer, another phone is more up your street. Stripe Street. That's terrible. I'm going to leave it there. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Sub if you're new to the channel and love this sort of content and want to see more. I love you and leave you. I'll see you in the next one. So it's Bill T. Peace out. Do just what you want